Well, thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here this evening um, and to share Edge Elastic. And I've been using Edge Elastic for, I think, seven or eight years now. Um, and I absolutely love it. I discovered um, I discovered Edge Elastic at an ed tech conference. I was talking to a fellow teacher that I had just met and I was explaining to her what I really wish existed in educational technology. And I was describing all the things I wanted to have. And she was like, you really need to check out Edge Elastic. Like that's exactly what you want. <laughs> and it was, it was like the educational website of my dreams but it actually existed. And I was really, really excited to have it as an option. And I have been using it ever since. Um, and I was really excited to learn from Esteban and uh, Karen this evening and how they were using Edge Elastic as well. I always feel like uh, these kind of presentations are helpful because Edge Elastic has so many features um, that I know I'm never using all of them because there's just a lot of them. Um, so I'm always excited to learn how other teachers are using it. Um, I am in a sort of weird position this year in that um, last year, my school was 100% in person and also virtual at the same time. Edge Elastic was really helpful with that. Um, and this year I'm kind of in a hybrid uh, situation where I'm sometimes in person with my students and then sometimes um, I am teaching from, uh, teaching from 12 hours away. So teaching virtual to my students uh, due to a move um, but I'm, I'm really excited to still be at my school and with my students. I mostly teach dual credit students, um, but I also teach some other regular English classes. And I've been working with my department a lot um, to prepare our students for state testing. So Indiana has just moved to having the SAT as their state assessment for juniors. And so as a department, we're really trying to make changes to prepare our students for this exam. And our students will be taking the online version of the SAT and Edge Elastic is really helpful in having a format that really mimics that format. And, uh, and I've used this in previous years for our state testing like ISTEP and ILEARN. Um, and so I am really excited to have this sort of interface to use with students because students would always tell me after testing that everything we worked on really prepared them for the test and they felt really confident. There wasn't any surprises in how the test was formatted because we had been using Edge Elastic and it had a very similar format. Um, so here's just like uh, what uh, what I can kind of create with an SAT grammar type thing. I, there's a lot of options, not only with question types, but how I can arrange fonts and colors even. Um, so I really kind of use that interface to mimic that sort of testing for my students. Um, it's also really easy to connect uh, questions to state standards and then also um, connect uh, and, and, and also to find assessments that have to do with the standards. So I can easily add that. And a lot of times I use question stems that our state comes up with um, to, to create my questions. Um, I think this assignment had like an attention grabber question at the beginning for an anticipatory hook. So that's the no standard question. Um, but you can see really easily when you look up assessments, what standards it connects to with the items um, on the assessment. Um, and this just kind of shows you also what how you can search for questions. So I looked up here, I, you can sort uh, through the library in so many different ways. You can search by grade level, you can look by subject, you can look by standard set, you can look by specific standard. And so this was Indiana 1112 RL 2.1. <laughs> and so 60 assessments came up for that. Um, and so you can kind of see all these resources. So that's just Indiana. Sometimes I expand it out to like, and just look up by keyword also. So I'm finding assessments that relate to other standards as well, because Indiana has kind of a version of common core standards. So it really aligns with some other state standards um, pretty easily as well. 
Um, but it's really easy to find this on the website. And I have a tendency of making my own assessments and sharing them with other teachers and making them public. Um, but it's also really easy to kind of find those assessments um, that other people have created and have cared enough to share. <laughs> Um, it also really works well as a way of sharing uh, team data. So currently, since I'm our department head, um, I'm being added as a co-teacher with a lot of, with the teachers in my department. So then I can go in and see their data really easily and I can share things with them um, as well. And this is something that we just started this year. So I can't really, I can't speak a whole lot about it. Um, but I'm really excited about this as an option. Um, in the past, I, I would share with someone who was actually a co-teacher in my classroom, so we use data that way. Um, but this year, we're using it as a way of sharing departmental data, and I just think that's so helpful that we can do that. And <laughs> Edge Elastic, I don't want to say there's too much data because there's not, but there's so much data. And I'm a real like data person. I'm, I'm probably a very weird math loving English teacher. Um, so I love to see all the numbers, but Edge Elastic has so many different ways of organizing that data and looking at that data. I don't, I don't have to do any of the work. I just have to find all the places for data. So these are all the different reports that come from a single assessment. So if I give one test to a student, it's going to give me like a summary. It's going to show me how different groups performed. It's going to analyze the questions on which were most difficult for students um, and which answers had the frequency. And then I can see performance by, by students. So I get to see the data in so many different ways. But then you can also get a assessment, multiple assessment reports. Um, and you can see how students are growing and changing over time. Um, and I love this. You can also see standard master mastery reports. Um, and this is where it becomes really important to kind of make sure that all your questions align to the standards and then that you're, that you're labeling all those questions to the standards. Um, and then you can get all of this data for the students. Um, and this is, I think this is one of the premium features. I've had a premium account for a while now. So I'm not always, I can't always remember what's available. Um, but the premium account is really affordable compared to a lot of other um, online resources out there. Um, but in addition to that, the free account also has so many features. Um, so it, it's really awesome what you can do with a free account, but it's like this data I think is invaluable, especially as you're working with departments. Um, you can also see like how students are doing with individual questions in this way. And I, I like I like visually how this looks and I can kind of see the breakdown on how students are doing on individual questions and what standards it aligns to. Um, again, and I just find that visually this is really helpful. Um, this is at the beginning of the year now, so we, we have our work cut out with the, for us with some of these standards, um, but we also see that on some of these standards like that first one, like students are performing really well on that. They don't need as much work. Okay, uh, this is another way to look at the performance. Um, and this actually, this I think is where department analysis is really cool. So this kind of shows how our different classes are performing. We're at a really small school. So we just have three classes of juniors. Um, and But that allows us to compare all that data and see how the classes are performing um, against each other. And we can kind of track how students are improving by class as well and how they're doing on the assessments. Okay, um, and this is just another way of looking at data, this performance by the standard, how are students doing? Again, like some of those standards, we really need to work more with our students. And this is where benchmark exams are really helpful to start off the year. And it kind of lets us know what we need to teach and what we need to work on with our students. Um, but I think visually to see that and see what our students need for growth is so important. Okay, and I think we 
looked at this with with some of the with I think all of us talked about this tonight because it's so great. Um, you get a live class board as students are taking their uh, taking their exam, but this is awesome. And if you do have some students who are virtual, this is especially important um, because. Um, you can see immediately like what students haven't started. You can see immediately where students get stuck. You're also provided with data. Um, and I think uh, this, uh, I'm not sure there's different, oh, there's the average time it took for students to answer the question here. So you can see like here they're reading the passage, which is why that first question <laughs> took so long. So you sort of get an idea of like, how much time students are spending on each question too. So you can see if a student rushed through it um, or if they really got stuck. You can use all of this data to kind of know what you need to work on with your students. And again, just visually, like there's questions on there where students really struggled compared to other questions. Um, and just to see that right off is really helpful. Okay, so I I love the data aspect of Edge Elastic, but I also just wanted to show a couple other things that I use Edge Elastic for. Um, and it's not, I use it not just for assessments and not just for data. Um, sometimes I use it to create anticipatory hooks for lessons. And there's so many different question types that I have options. So this is a uh, an anticipatory hook that I made for a speech by Florence Kelly about child labor that was written in the early 1900s. And so I use these um, primary source photographs from the time period um, of children working um, in these factories at the turn of the century. And I had students create captions, including hashtags for the photograph um, and to kind of explore different images and to kind of get a feel for some of the issues that the speaker was talking about. I also teach a film literature class, which I absolutely love teaching and all the different, I've gotten to use a lot of different question types that I don't use in my regular ELA classes. So this is one where I have students kind of analyze the composition of shots in films. And I use this um, selector tool where students can draw on the image. Um, and I just love that there's so many question types that I can use. I think this tends to be used for math, I would guess, based on what I'm seeing there. <laughs> um, but I use it for my ELA class. And I think I would use this for, I think English is turning more and more into like media focused as well and analyzing media. So Edge Elastic really lends itself to, to questions and types that can analyze media. Okay, another thing is there's a reading passage question type, but a lot of times I use film clips in that and have students analyze it that way. Um, I also love that Edge Elastic um, gives so much flexibility and freedom, um, and it allows me to create my own assessments and not use already made curriculum. I really like having freedom to be creative in my school district. I feel really lucky that my school district is really supportive of that. Um, so it enables me to put in text. This was a farm to table curriculum that I created. So I had a speech from Michelle Obama on food marketing and advertising. Um, so these are things that aren't, I haven't seen other curriculum use it, but it fits so well in with what I was teaching and I could make my own. Um, and I also use Edge Elastic to create assessments that increase student engagement. I think a lot of times, I think we all know that standardized tests don't always have the most exciting passages for students, but I really try to choose things that connect with students. So in this case, I used a local letter to the editor um, that was written about the uh, local hospital um, maternity ward closing. Um, and this letter actually, that and uh, protests of various kinds really resulted in the maternity ward staying open. Um, but it was such a wonderful letter, a really good example of rhetoric. So I, I use local text to connect to my students too. And Edge Elastic gives me the flexibility to create assessments like this that look like standardized state tests, that work like standardized tests, but have reading passages that I think really connect to my individual students. And then I also, you know, put in, I, you know, I, it allows me to create curriculum and activities with that have more diversity in them, which I think is important for my students. It allows them to see 
um, people who are maybe different than them or maybe similar to them, but it allows me to, to have some flexibility and engage students by expanding their view of the world. Um, and it also allows me to put in Monte Python clips. So I think that's really important to know. Um, and I put in Saturday Night Live clips as well. So this was a lesson I created about logical fallacies. So we started with the witch burning trial clip. Um, and then we ended with the, the, the same clip and had students actually show what they learned about logical fallacies by analyzing the use of logical fallacies in here. So I can just create things that it just gives me so much flexibility that I can create things that I at least think are fun here. Most of my students like it as well. <laughs> um, and then I've, I've also created, in the past, shared about how I create remote lessons, and I've, I'm still using those lessons in the classroom. So um, you can check that out on YouTube if that's helpful for you. And later this week, I'm also sharing about how you can use Edge Elastic for differentiation. So, um, there's just so much that you can use Edge Elastic with, and I've been really excited to use it. So thank you, Edge Elastic, for creating such a wonderful uh, tech tool for teachers. And if you want to find my Edge Elastic assessments, if you just look for my name, they'll show up. So thank you.